All right, turn the Bible tonight to the book of Psalm 81. Psalm 81 tonight. Psalm 81 tonight. Glad to see you here tonight. I mean that. Glad for everybody that came. Um, I told Kyle, and I, I'm, you know, and I meant it. Five minutes before they walked in, I was thinking about them. Kyle's told me many times, and I'm not just, Kyle's told me many times that they want to be here. But you know how it is being a farmer. Uh, it's tough sometimes getting here. Uh, and uh, so I, I was glad when they walked in tonight and uh, that they were able to make it. Of course, he left his wife home to do the work, but hey, that's okay. That's what, uh, you know. So anyway, Psalm 81 tonight. Let me just quickly say again that um, Arnold Judy made it stop. They, they benched it Wednesday night to me and... and uh, those folks came to church this morning, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when I asked, uh, you know, if you don't know for sure you're going to heaven when you die, slip your hand up, and uh, he didn't, but he looked right at me, and uh, so I uh, pray for them. He said he plans on being back, and uh, so this week I'll go see him and run him off, but uh, I uh, will... Uh, uh, you, you pray for them, pray for them, uh, that God would speak to their heart, really. Uh, folks need to be saved. Psalm 81, Psalm 81, we'll just read beginning in verse 8, let's stand, shall we? Tonight, as we read one more time from God's word here, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up under their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against them. Their adversaries, the haters of the Lord, should have submitted themselves unto Him, but their time, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey, out of the rock, would I have satisfied thee. Father, we thank you again now for another evening. Lord, we thank you for the singing. Lord, we thank you for the truth of the song uh, that was sung. We're already over on the other side. That Lord, we have a a seat reserved in heaven already. Father, we thank you for that tonight. Lord, I thank you again for each one of the folks who have been able to make their way back, uh, Lord, to this place this evening. Lord, I, I pray again, want to pray for Elena, Lord. I know that she started those rabies shots, and Lord, I know that, that Lord, you've got to get five of them right from the get-go, and they do not go in very fast. And so, Lord, we pray for her, pray that you would help her. Lord, I pray for BJ tonight. Lord, he's uh, somewhat concerned that uh, he possibly may have torn uh, uh, his knee up uh, when he uh, tried falling down the steps the other, other week. And uh, Lord, I pray for him. Lord, I pray that, that he would not have to have his knee scoped out again. And pray, Jesus, that you would, uh, Lord, help him. Lord, I thank you tonight for answer to prayer. Lord, for answer to prayer. Lord, I thank you for answer to prayer on my part. Lord, I thank you for an answer to prayer, Lord, on the part of the people who prayed for me, Lord, these last five weeks. Lord, I, I thank you tonight that, Lord, really, I, I know that I want to be healed yesterday, but, Lord, how, Lord, really uh, quickly uh, this has gone by. And, Lord, I thank you tonight that it's feeling better, Lord, every day. And Lord, I honestly believe that's an answer to prayer. And I've told people, Lord, I've told the therapist that. It's because people prayed for him. So, Father, again, we thank you tonight for answering prayer, for Lord, for hearing us. Lord, for hearing us, Lord, one of our precious promises that we make come boldly to the throne of grace. Lord, we thank you tonight for that, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace this evening. And, Lord, that we might obtain mercy and find help in time of need. Lord, how we need that, find grace and mercy. How we do need that. Again, now we pray that you'll meet with us in the few moments that we have remaining. Lord, thank you again for our, our, our place. 
Lord, this is our place here that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for this place. Lord, I thank you that you've allowed us as brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, to have crossed paths. And Lord, that we are here tonight. I thank you, Lord, that we can be here tonight. Lord, bless, we pray now in these few moments in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen, you may be seated. It is good to be in church on a Sunday night. I, I suppose that uh, it's uh, really my father's fault. My, uh, uh, really, uh, you know, when dad got saved, he went from never going to church to always going to church. Truth of the matter is that I never, ever, ever in my life before I was saved ever heard of anybody that had church at night. Just never did. And then, uh, of course, Dad got us going to church, and that was the end of that. But anyway, Psalm 81 tonight, really in verse 8, Hear, O my people. Hear, O my people. I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. Verse 11. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would not of me. Now, there's a lot of good verses in Psalm 81. We like uh, that verse that, he would have uh, opened wide thy mouth, and uh, I will fill it. He said that's, that's what he would do. In verse 10, he said, I would have uh, fed them. In verse 16, with the finest of the wheat, with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied? Good verses, really good verses. I want to speak to us for a few minutes tonight, time that we have left, on hearing God. Hearing God. You ever been involved in a one-way conversation? My wife's. Many times. Fellas, you know how it is. Your wife can be talking to you, and you're looking at her, but you don't hear a word she says. My wife's big one is, as I'm falling asleep, she's asking me for $100, something like that. You know, she, she, she said, don't you remember what I asked you last night? No, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Um, she could be talking, and, and, and we get so easily distracted. And it's not just my wife, but if, if I took the wives back in my office and I said, you ever talk to your husband and he never heard a word you'd say, I'd venture to say that probably most of them would say, well, yeah, preacher, that's a daily occurrence. But the truth of the matter is that God speaks to us in much the same way, and we don't hear him. We, we just... we. God wants to speak to us. He wants to speak to us. He has a desire to speak to us. And he wants us to listen. But as it says there in Psalm, in verse 8, Hear, O my people, I will testify. And again, but uh, my people would not listen to my voice. They would not listen to me. They would not listen. God trying to get our attention. Some of us are old enough to remember. Some of us are, and some of us are so old that, this didn't happen to them. Yeah, yeah, I probably forgot. Do you remember some of you? Do some of you remember air raid sirens? They, I mean, they would blare. I can remember the one on top of uh, Public School 102 uh, on Erdman Avenue in Baltimore where I went to school. We used to have air raid drills. Now, they were stupid, air raid drills, because they would tell you, well, get under your desk. That way, if there's a, a bomb that drops, uh, the, you, you know, well, look, the bomb they're talking about, if a bomb drops, it ain't going to matter whether you're under your desk or not, because you're going to be gone. But those air raid sirens, I mean, those things were loud, they were piercing, but they were to get your attention. Maybe, maybe the Russians are going to bomb us today. God tries to get our attention. So why does God try to get our attention, preacher? Because he loves us so much. God loves us so much that he's trying to get our attention. Think about how much God loved Israel. And it was because Israel, as somebody has noted lately, that Israel was the largest of nations. But it, it was because God loved them. It wasn't that they had ever done anything good. God just loved them. 
And God loves us in the same way. God, God desires to talk to us. But a lot of times we're like that one-way conversation. The wife is talking and she's talking and she's talking and you're listening to the ball game. You're trying to hear the score. You're trying to hear what's going on. And she's talking and you're going, yeah, yeah. And you're listening to the ball game. And she's going on and on. And you're going, yeah, that's right. And she keeps on talking. You're listening to the ball game. And you just keep on listening. Look, God wants to get our attention because he loves us. He loves us. And you say, well, why is that, preacher? Because the truth is that you and I need deliberate direction in our lives. We need direction in our lives. Look, as, look at Joshua chapter 1. Look at Joshua chapter 1 for a minute. Joshua chapter 1. We need deliberate direction in our lives. You know what America really needs? It needs some godly dads. President Obama came out and said the greatest threat to our national security is climate change. Now that's what the guy said. Climate change. That's not our greatest threat. And anybody with any common sense would know that. We need some godly dads. I don't know how, look, look and then you say, well, it's a little late in the ball game for you, preacher. They're already growing up. But that, to be a godly dad, you need deliberate direction in your life. Look, we need some godly grandmothers. Here's grandma out here. Great grandma. Great, great grandma. No, not yet. Okay, all right. I'm trying to push the envelope a little bit, but, but we, need, we, need, we need Christians we need, Christ, we need godly dads, we need godly moms, and, and we need deliberate direction in our life. God tries to give us, look at Joshua. Joshua needed deliberate direction. Moses died. Verse 1, Moses died in Joshua 1.1. 1, 1. God said, Moses is dead in verse 2. Verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I, said, have said unto, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and under the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. God said every place you step is going to be yours. Now look, he needed, he needed some direction. Joshua needed direction. Verse five, 6, Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance of the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Second time, God gives him direction. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. We know verse 8, verse 9. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Look, you and I need direction. Suppose Joshua comes up to the promised land and and you'll note what it says then in verse 11. Joshua in verse 10 commanded the people in verse 11, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare ye, prepare, slow down, prepare you vittles for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go and to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it and the Reubenites and to the Gadites and the half tribe, etc., etc. Now look, Joshua needed deliberate direction in his life. God said, be strong and of good courage. Here Joshua comes. God said in, in three days we're going to pass over to the other side. In three days we're going to pass over. We're going to go over to the land to possess it. Now what a task lay before them. Quite a task. All the Canaanites were in the land. All the Canaanites were there. And God said to him three times, be strong and of good courage. Do not be 
afraid. What we need are godly dads. We need deliberate direction. I know that it's not the most pleasant thing. My, my, uh, if you looked at Jamie and Michael the wrong way, they'd start crying. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, ben was somewhere between Timmy and Jamie and Mike. Timmy, no. Nah. Nobody likes to spank their children. Nobody likes doing that. That old saying, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. And no, not really. But can I remind you about what God said? That a child left to himself will bring shame to his mother. You, you can't. You can't take the world's philosophy. Well, you know, you, I, I said this morning, I'm going to say it again, I'm just old-fashioned. That's the way I am. I, that's, you know, that's the way I am. I believe the Bible. I try to live by the Bible. I try to do what the Bible says. I try to do what God says. Uh, I, I'm old-fashioned. Tim did not need a time out. Now, Tim, you go sit in the corner for 20 minutes and you think about what a bad boy you were. He couldn't think from five minutes from one minute to the next. A time out? That isn't what he needed. Listen. We need direction. God wants to give us direction. Look, we need direction in the church. We need Godly direction in the church. And the direction that we ought to go. I have thought. You know, a lot of these purpose-driven churches, man, they're, they're, they're busting at the seams. Now, I would dare say that most of the people in those churches have no idea where they're going when they die. But I thought, man, I thought this, I can picture this in my mind, Alex up here jumping up and down and pom-poms and trying to get us excited. And Doug up here with him. Hey, you know, maybe, maybe we should try, and look, I've thought this. I don't even remember. All I remember is this. If you change what you preach, you'd have a whole lot more people come to church here. If you change what you preach, you'd have a whole lot more people come to church here. I, I was told that a long time ago. We need godly direction. That's what we need. We need godly direction. We don't need men direction. We need, what does God have to say? What's God, you know, the Bible says, and I realize he's talking to Israel. The Bible says, remove not the, the ancient landmarks. Look at Jeremiah chapter 6 for a minute. Look at Jeremiah 6. And, and I know this is probably familiar to you, but look at Jeremiah chapter 6 for a minute. I believe it's chapter 6. It just came to me. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Um, Jeremiah chapter 6. They, notice in chapter 6. Verse 14, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Brother, if there was ever a time in, in America when people ought to be ashamed. But no, they're not ashamed. They're not ashamed of what they do. Well, were they at all ashamed? Neither could they blush. They don't even blush anymore. Therefore... They shall fall among them that fall at the time that I will visit. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Here's what God says. Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask 
for the old paths, for the old ways. Somebody wrote a book, The Gospel in the 20th Century. I believe Francis Schaeffer wrote something like that. Somebody wrote a book similar to that. The Gospel in the 20th Century. Somebody said about Spurgeon that he hadn't changed his message for 2,000 years. If we would just change, maybe we would get a few more people. Now, this is what God says. Ask for the old paths wherein is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. We will not walk therein. Now look, we need godly direction. We need godly direction in our homes. We need godly direction in our church. We need that. We need godly direction in our lives. Joshua needed that. We think of Joshua. We think of, of Moses. God said to Moses, I want you to go down and tell Pharaoh, let my, I can't do that. I can't speak. He said, all right, your brother's down there, and I'll have him go down there for you. Well, what if they don't believe me? Well, God said, they'll, they'll just believe you. He said, now go down there and do this. Go and do it. Finally, Moses said, I'll do it. He went down and said, let my people go. But Moses needed direction. Moses needed direction leading the children of Israel for 40 years. He needed godly direction. Now look, if we're going to have it, we need to hear God. God speaks. We need to hear God. As we read there in Psalm 81, Israel wouldn't listen to him. They wouldn't listen. You know, I, I really believe that God speaks to people today, but it's like that one-way conversation with your wife or one-way conversation uh, with your husband. You may be talking, but they're not hearing what you're saying. And, and the same thing's true with God. He's speaking to us. God does speak from heaven. God still speaks from heaven. But are we listening? I think the verse says... Something, if it doesn't, it, it should. It says, spare the rod. Doesn't it say spare the rod and spoil the child? Is that what it says? I think it says something like that. I know it says spare not for his crying. Look, we need godly direction for dads to raise godly men. I've said, look, some of you are in the, are, are in the bottom of the eighth inning. I mean, some of you... My dear brother Pete, love him, but God bless him. He's 81 years old. And after the way he talked to me the other day, he shouldn't, he, he's not fit to live. I went over, he, I took him out of the kindness of my heart over to see Dave Marmon, those two 80-year-old guys, and they're ganging up on me. Look, if, if there's going to be a church, if Jesus should tarry, I don't see that. I, I really, uh, I don't see that. We need to have some godly men who are raising some godly boys. Godly girls. Moses needed direction. Joshua needed direction. Noah needed direction. Here, I want you to build the ark like this. I want you to preach for 120 years. My spirit's not always strive with man. I know everybody can different, and nobody knows what happened. Nobody knows what happened when Noah preached for 120 years. Other than when they got down to the 120 years, nobody was saved but Noah and his wife and his three boys and, and the three wives. We, we know that nobody got on the ark but those eight. I don't know that somebody did not get saved during the 120 years and died. We know that Methuselah died the year the flood came. I suspect that we'll see him in heaven. I believe that Methuselah's father was probably a righteous man, and he died long before the flood came. I suspect, it was, I suspect there were some saved people when Noah started out, but when he got down to the end, there weren't any but that eight. Noah needed direction. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Look, Noah needed direction now how to build the ark. He needed direction on what to take on the ark. God said, I'll send the animals, but... God said, now you need to take this much food, you're going to be on the ark for a long time. Noah found grace, but he needed direction. We cannot expect, uh, we cannot expect as believers just, okay, here we go, we're going to walk through this world and, and never hear from God. 
Noah needed direction. He needed that. Why do, we, why do we need direction? Well, we need it for comfort and assurance. It is well with my soul. Aren't, listen, aren't you glad that the Bible says tonight that we are now the sons of God? Amen. Right now, we're the sons of God. Doth not yet appear. Behold. 1 John 3, 1. Behold. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, we, that we should be called the sons of God. What kind of love is this? Uh, did you ever take stock of your life? Did you ever look back over your life how many times you messed up? I do. How's that song go? I am amazed that God would love me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Why do we need to hear from God? We live in a troubled world. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea. I heard a missionary from Canada say that in Canada, the law, while it has never been acted on, the law in Canada has been voted and is in place that if you say anything about homosexuality, they can come and arrest you. If you're preaching, they can come arrest you. Our attorney general has said that anybody that says anything against Islam should be considered a civil rights offense. Now you can say anything you want about Christians, but you can't say anything about that. We need to hear from God because we need assurance. Look, when Paul and Silas were there in the prison in, in Philippi, and they were down there and they had been beaten. And they were down in that prison. Don't you think they needed some assurance and comfort from God? Brother, we need to hear from God. We need to hear from God. We need to have that assurance and that come. Look, for every Red Sea that we have, what are we going to do, Moses? Here comes Pharaoh and the Egyptians and the Red Sea's in front of us. What are we going to do? Moses said, hang on, wait a minute, stand still. Let's see what God's going to do. For every Red Sea, and, and somebody said, I believe Lou said this, somebody said this. That for the Israel to get across the Red Sea all in one night, that night, God had to do, have divided the Red Sea almost a mile wide for all the people to get across. We think we look at Charlton Heston on the Ten Commandments. He waves his staff over the sea and a, a little path goes down through the sea. Man, that, it was wide that went across. For every Red Sea that we have, isn't God great? Isn't God good? We're going to come up against an AI every once in a while. We need that comfort and assurance that I'm still the child of God. I'm still on my way to heaven. Look, we need to be here. God said about Israel, they didn't listen to what I said. I, I would have fed them with the finest of wheat. I would have done that. I would have given them honey out of a rock. Now, brother, you don't usually get honey out of a rock. But God said, I would have given them honey out of the rock if they only would have listened, if they only want to have listened. What is it? God wants us to know him. I, I said in Sunday, do you know God? Not do you know God, but do you know God? Again, I would encourage you to get that book by J.I. Packard. I, not, I don't agree there, but J.I. Packard wrote that book, Knowing God. It's a good book about God. Look over Psalm 85. Psalm 85. Psalm 85 for a minute. Psalm 85. How does God, how is it that God speaks? Psalm 85. Psalm 85. I'll get her here. Psalm 85. Psalm 85. How is it that God speaks? God, of course, speaks through his word. God does speak through his word. May I ask him? Has God ever spoken to you through his word? Has God ever? 
me, I, I'm just saying me, and, and I know everybody's different. May I use some correct English tonight? I can't hardly. Yeah, that's good English. Don't use no double negatives in the same sentence. But anyway, I can hardly read the Word of God three or four verses before God's saying something to me. God speaks through His Word. God speaks through His Holy Spirit. God does speak through His Holy Spirit. God speaks to us. We're reading. The Holy Spirit says something to me. Do you know that God speaks through others? God speaks through others. I love, really, I mean this. When, when you say, preacher, you shouldn't ask them this, but when guys come to church here, I ask them, I say, uh, you know, I, I ask them, you got any experience of speaking? Yeah. I say to them, I said, now listen. I've heard some guys speak for an hour that it was like 15 minutes. I've heard guys preach and, man, I couldn't believe they were done. I've heard other guys speak for 15 minutes and thought it was an hour. God speaks through others. Have you ever heard a good sermon? I don't mean one of my sermons. Have you ever heard a good sermon? Have you ever heard a good sermon? I mean, where, where, where the preacher's preaching... One of, my favorite, one of my favorite preachers is Jack Green. Jack Green is Oliver Green's brother. Now, if you never, Oliver Green died, I believe Oliver Green died in the, boy, I'm going to say in the early 70s. But Oliver Green was the guy that preached the night my dad got saved. And, and Oliver Green had the old-time gospel hour. He was out of Greenville, South Carolina. Wrote commentaries. I got most of his commentaries on the Bible. The, the thing about his commentaries are that they all, he almost always makes a beeline for the cross, no matter what verse it is. He almost always makes a beeline for the cross. Anyway, Oliver Green's brother, Jack Green. I love that guy. He's so old now. He, he's, he's still alive. but Man, I've heard that guy preach, and it was like heaven came down. I mean, a tremendous preacher. God speaks through His Word. God speaks through His Holy Spirit. God speaks through others. I said Psalm 85. Psalm 85, and look at verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. I will hear what He has to say. That's why it's so important to read the Bible. Just to read the Bible. I cannot emphasize enough I cannot say it enough I cannot repeat it enough just read it just just read it I know the Bible says study in Timothy it says study to show thyself approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed okay there needs to be a little Bible study in there but more than anything and I, I've said this and it is true about me you know, people say, how do you, know, how do you know what you know about the Bible? Yeah, I went to college. You know, I don't remember anything in college. I remember some guys I heard in college. I remember Ken Chapman's classes for the fact, the Gospel of John. I had him for the Gospel of John. I worked from 10 o'clock at night to 5 o'clock in the morning, went home, got ready for school, fell asleep sometimes. Carol would send somebody up before we were married. She'd send somebody up beating them at the door. You got to get up. You got to get on the bus. To... All right, I get on the bus and I go. Then by the time chapel rolled around, I was starting to get drowsy. And so by the time I got to Ken Chapman's class at 12 o'clock, I would walk in and I would sit in the back corner back there and I'd put my head back. He said, let's pray and I would wake up when we were leaving the room. I remember very little about the Gospel of John. The reason that I have learned whatever I have learned is one, I've, I've, heard, I've had good preaching. I've heard good preaching. Matt told me about a guy that preached on Ruth. What a great, great account that is. 
we, I, I've had the opportunity in my life to hear some really good preachers. I've heard John R. Rice. I've heard Jack Hiles. I've heard uh, Curtis Hudson. I've heard uh, 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 Jack Green. I've heard Oliver Green. I've heard countless guys. I've heard guys that we've never even heard of. I've heard guys that have been a blessing. God speaks through his word. God speaks through his Holy Spirit. God speaks through others. The psalmist said, I, in verse 8, what is it? I will hear what God the Lord will speak. Jump back to James real quick. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Let me give you a couple things and we'll, we'll be through. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. There are two kinds of hearers. There are two kinds of hearers. James chapter 1. James 1. There are two kinds of hearers. There are passive hearers. You hear what I said? Yeah. What did I say? Oh, I don't know. I thought you heard what I said. Well, I did hear what you said, but I don't remember what you said. There are passive hearers. There are aggressive hearers. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. There are passive hearers. Uh, yeah, I heard what he said. Has God ever impressed anything upon you to do? Hand out a track. Say a quick prayer for somebody. There are passive hearers. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, okay. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Be ye doers of the word. Doers of the word. See, I need direction. I need to hear God. I need to hear God through his word. I need to hear God through his Holy Spirit. I need to hear God through others. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. If we're just, do you hear what God said? Yeah, I heard what he said. What did he say? I don't know. It's like the Israelites. God spoke to them, but they wouldn't listen. God said, seek the old paths, and that's the good way. Ah, but they wouldn't listen. Nah, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do what God says. We don't want to do what God says. Now, for if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, a mirror, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. He was. It's like looking at yourself in the mirror and forgetting what you even look like. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. See, what we need, as D.L. D. L. Moody said this, and you probably heard it, Moody said this, when we read, when we pray, we talk to God. When we read the Bible, God talks to us. Moody said if he had to do it over again, he'd do less talking and more listening to what it is that God had to say. But be ye doers. There are passive hearers. Well, I know that I ought to train my child up the way he's go, but I, I'll tell you, that's a lot of work. And you're right. It is a lot of work. I'm trying to make your kids mine. Especially when your kid's like me. I mean, it, it's a tough job making your kids mine. But we need to have godly dads. We need to have godly kids who are going to grow up to be godly dads. Do you, do you realize it was one generation Noah got off the ark. He got drunk. The Bible's not exactly clear about what happened. But something happened in that. Something happened back one generation. It was only a couple generations until they were at the Tower of Babel. What happened? A bunch of righteous people got off the ark, but it didn't last very long. We need to be an aggressive hearer so that we are confirmed in the truth. So that this, and we're through. So that we can communicate God's truth to others. So that we can communicate God's truth to others. Look, I just happen to be the preacher. 
all of us in here, all of us in here, ought to be able to communicate God's truth. Look real quick, Hebrews chapter 5, and I am through. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrew, he, Hebrews chapter 5. Verse 11, of whom we have many things to say. Hard to be uttered. Look, there are some difficult things in the Bible. There are some things that are hard to understand. There are some things that are hard to understand in the Bible. Some things that we just don't get. We don't understand. God's going to have to explain them to us someday. For when for the time he ought to be teachers, what happened? People are passive hearers. Instead of being aggressive hearers, they hear the word of God and they simply do not act upon it. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Look, here's what I'm trying to, to do. I'm trying to get you to a place where you can be a teacher of the word. But there are so many Christians, as it says there in verse 12, man, you, you can't hear. As it says in verse 11, I'm sorry, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing, a passive hearer, not a doer. God said, I would have fed them with the finest of wheat. God said, uh, I would have given them honey out of the rock. God said, to open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But they would not listen. The Bible tells us again, in the, I believe the book of Corinthians, the Bible says that these things are happened, have fallen unto us upon whom the ends of the world are come. These things are an example upon whom the ends of the world come. Listen, Israel would not listen. Let, let's be hearers. Let's hear what God has. We need direction. We need to be able, as I said, God speaks three ways. Through his word, through his Holy Spirit, and through others. Through others. Through us. Let's hear what God has to say. Let's have some direction in our lives. We need godly men in this church. We need godly women in this church. We need godly dads. We need godly grandfathers. We need godly grandmothers and godly moms. We need godly Sunday school teachers. We need godly singers. Let's be hearers. Let's hear what God has to say to us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, that you're so merciful to us. How many times have you spoken? And Lord, you spoke to me the other day about something and I just didn't have what I needed. God, help us to be attentive. Lord, I think about old Elijah. You didn't speak through the fire. You didn't speak through the earthquake. You just spoke to him in a still, small voice. Lord, I pray that we might be listening. Help us to hearken and to hear. Help the preacher. Lord, to diligently set about to do that. Lord, we never got to that in Sunday school, but Lord, help us, we pray. Again, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for the good folks who have, Lord, who have come back tonight. Lord, encourage us, Lord, to be hearers. Lord, just to simply read the book. And Lord, speak to us. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold some wondrous thing tomorrow. Lord, as we read it one more time, Lord, speak to us, we pray. Speak, O oh Lord, and I will listen. Lord, bless now as we go our, our ways, as we go to our homes. Give us a good night's rest. Lord, give us a good week this week. Lord, if you should tarry, if not, Lord, we're going to be in heaven. Lord, what a great day that's going to be. And we thank you for that. Thank you for your words of comfort, your words of encouragement, Lord, to us. Now bless us, we pray. Help us now as we go. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen and amen.